Uh, why are we going to talk about Bihar? First, I am from Bihar, so I will never miss any opportunity to speak in Bihar if I can. Uh, and I, the second thing is that we think, a lot of us think that Eastern India is the place where this thing can really make a difference. That's the most energy starved area in India besides the tribal parts. Uh, has water very close to ground. So we see a lot of potential. Uh, Bihar is one of the best cases. And I want to convince, the session will not only be on Eastern India or not only on Bihar, but I want to just, we have a hypothesis with me and others, my other peers in ITP that high prices of energy for irrigation is one big factor. If you ask me, I would probably think that it's the biggest hurdle to rapid agricultural growth in Bihar. This is one of the reasons. That's what I would try to convince you in the time that I have left. Uh, I'm left. And then the session will do more. Just to set up a basis that this thing can, uh, can have a big effect. So Lord Anthony, uh, he was an IS, ISIS officer. Uh, after 1873, Drauch did the, uh, he was, uh, and the old Bangal did the survey of agriculture uh, condition in, in area. And he found that in 1873, rice fields were anywhere between 500 to 1700 kilograms per hectare in Bihar. The highest yields were in Chaparan. And cropping intensity was about 1.32. So it's the highest. In 2009, rice yields in Bihar, you can look at 2010, 11 was a good year, but it's still around 1500, 1700 kg per hectare. Cropping intensity is still 1.4. In this, in this 130 years, 140 years that have intervened, population pressure on land has increased five times. Five times more people. Major expansion in irrigation, hybrid seeds, fertilizers, things, a lot of things have happened. But you don't see any action on the output side. Why? That's just one thing, that, that's the question. If you look at, and it's not just about short term trends, even if you look at the long term trends, 40 years, there's barely any growth in the value of output of the 44 bean crops. This is from Hala and Singh. And if you look at the net, net state domestic product of agriculture, it has been going down actually in Bihar. Okay? No, 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 no. Real, this is real. It has been going down. The other problem is not only is the economy, so this, this is rice yield over a long period of time, and this is wheat yield. Not only is this stagnant, there have been a lot of other recently Bihar economy is booming. I don't see that boom. I don't know where that boom is. I'm yet to see it. Uh, so it's not only stagnant, it's also more volatile. Normally, groundwater irrigation is supposed to be the best bet against uh, rainfall or shocks. Bihar has very, it's very rich in groundwater. And still, the yields are very variable, very vulnerable to highly vulnerable to uh, rainfall shocks, more than other states of India, except China. No two years, no two years since 93, 94 has seen consecutive growth in agriculture GDP. If it goes up in this year, it always goes down in the next year. So if you look at three sources of growth in, in, in any economy, in agriculture economy, you, you will grow more crops on the same land, cropping intensity. Um, so if you look at cropping pattern, rice and wheat uh, dominates like anything. 85% area is in the food plains. And you can't do much in curry because there's so much rain that paddy is almost forced upon you. You can have high paddy. But there's little action in summer. There's hardly anything in summer. There's hardly any cropping. And in Ravi, what I thought is there's a wheat addiction. Acres after acres is only wheat. And you talk to some of the ICR people that tell that there are limitations in the current cropping cycle that wheat yields in Bihar are capped by the timing and other factors. So the wheat yield, you see that the yield is low and it's not responsive to input diversification as much as it is in other parts of India. And if you look at the CSP figures and you impute the cost of labor and land to the farmer makes a loss. So it's basically a cost covering agriculture. So the point here is that the cropping pattern of Bihar doesn't reflect its natural endowments. It's the most land scarce rural area in anywhere in the world. Only an urban slums are more densely populated than rural Bihar. Yeah? So land scarce, they rich, rich in labor, there are five farmers in the care of next own area. So full employment, even if you consider 100 days, like Narega guarantee has a full employment. Each hectare of land, and these are like five people who report farming as the main activity. I'm not talking about the population. The population density is something like 1,200. 12 people per hectare. So each hectare of land needs to generate labor opportunity of 500 mandates. Yeah? The rice wheat cropping system that we have at most, at best, would do 160 days. Yeah? The way the agriculture universities do it. So, but if you look at the cropping pattern that we have, instead of maximizing return to land, the scarce resource, farmers seem to be economizing on irrigation. That's what they're doing. And these are the crops that take less water, are often also the crops that are taking less water. Sorry, less so similarly, if you look at cropping intensity, it's not a Malthus, it's not a Bosun response. Bosun had a theory, she turned Malthus on his head and said that 
and interested in distribution responses to response to uh, population in distribution. It behaves going the way Martha said predicted or feared. So population has increased, but you don't see much action in cropping intensity, which is not and Bihar is similar to West Bengal in some sense, and Bangladesh there, the cropping intensity has responded to increasing population density, not in Bihar. So I think there's something to do with uh, retail price of diesel. This graph doesn't tell much. Yeah? So diesel price is like secularly going up, so you can't derive much out of it. But if you just did a simple correlation, both cropping intensity and production of wheat, not just the this seems to be negatively correlated with increase in price. This is not possible. This is just bare correlation. A lot of things to be going on. It seems that this, this does affect. One would be increase in diesel price, nominal price, associated with a reduction in crop intensity of more than a half a percentage point. If you look at crop yields, that's another way to increase uh, your total value of agriculture. That's also quite stuck. Price uh, yield growth year on year is about 1%, uh, wheat 1.5%. Value of output also close to 1% uh, from 62 to 65 to 2003-6. Population is growing at 2.25% over the last over this period, or even more. Average rice yield is 1300 kg in 2011, which is a bad year. Wheat yield is about 2 tons per hectare. It is higher, but the gap between Bihar and the rest of India is higher for me uh, than it is for rice. Now, what is, if you look at the old literature in Bihar, they would say that Bihar is not growing because we are feudal, we are Jamindar like, we are not interested in increasing our production, we are interested in increasing our power over the poor people or something. But this data shows you, this is about a bunch of inputs compared Bihar and India for 81, the 30 years back and now. Uh, 2001, 3 is still poor. If you look at the more recent data, it's all of the inputs that, in, that is in control of individuals, Biharis have not only caught up with the rest of India, they have gone ahead of the rest of India. Pump density is higher, fertilizer use is higher, uh, frequency of use, prevalence of HOLD seeds is higher, everything is higher except the yields. The yield gap has in fact increased in spite of, in spite of uh, input intensification. Uh, that has happened. So we have ahead or is, is at par or ahead of the mechanism. You take anything, all the yield enhancing input that you dream of, all of it is there. It's catching up or has gone past the rest of India. But it doesn't show up in uh, across the product of agriculture. The most surprising cases are for the lactics, almost an exponential rise. Way higher than any other, uh, many other states of India and Indian average. If the data are uh, everything is undergirded by that. So, and if you look at the surveys, not the NSIS or other surveys, every, almost every farmer in India does use chemical fertilizer. It's not that one pocket is using very intensively and other, everyone else is not. Everyone is using fertilizer, using a lot of it, and you still don't see the response. If you look at the literature, there's an old literature on Eastern India, in EPW, you can find the whole discussion there. It describes uh, this stagnation to three things. Floods, feudals, the, the, the permanent settlement, uh, the legacy of permanent settlement in Bengal by Cornwallis, and uh, public policy, poor public policy. Could floods be a reason? Uh, so if you look at locating in North Bihar and South Bihar, South Bihar doesn't get flooded. There's like four or five percent area in South Bihar which is low line land and gets flooded or there. And North Bihar does get flooded. Uh, a lot of it. But if you look at the cross for media pattern, it's exactly the same. Either it's the artifact of the lattice who enter data. Could be the same, but their code relative is hard to believe. It's the exact same. So my sense is that flood do have effect. I'm not saying floods don't have any effect. Yeah, you see the three zones of Bihar, the ones which have maximum percentage of our affected area also have the minimum yield. So floods do have an effect. But I'm saying that beyond floods, even how similar the patterns look in the two geographic regions, there has to be something which is common to both areas too. It could be more than one thing, but... So, we think that that's uh, high energy prices. I'll come to that. So, our view, if you engage in literature, if you sign a paper like this in, in EPW, the reviewer's comment would be that you are taking a technocentric view. It's almost condescending to the way they use it. So the technocentric view which I am taking here is that indifferent public policy uh, is, is, is one of the reasons that, that you see uh, this kind of results. That people, earlier the big was that farmers do not have incentives, so how much time do I have? Fine more. Okay. So farmers do not have incentives, they maximize power, not returns. But if you look at the new input data, that argument goes away. Farmers are taking initiative. They are putting the Bihar is the worst bank area too. So if all of these things that they have bought and put in, they're using their own money or borrowed money from their own source. They're still catching. 
So what is it that they are investing all this money, they are doing all this things and still not able to leverage? Yeah. So the old question that here the incentives are not there, the, that people do not have the initiative, that, that has become moot now given the new data, if the data are right. Yeah. So I have come to the ground, people look at it in different ways, I will use the example of groundwater uh, irrigation. There has been heavy private investment in Bihar, in pumps and boats. The city IWMI has done a census of three villages in Vaishali district. There is one pump set every two and a half acre of land. Huh? So irrigated area is more than in India, pump density is more, even small farmers have pumps, random sample survey also. Say that almost every farmer irrigates. In that census too, 80% of land is irrigated and every farmer irrigates. Uh, but irrigation intensity remains terribly low in Bihar. They do not irrigate in Khari, barely if at all, and only three irrigations in Ravi and there is zero summer pump. Right? Reason, there is high diesel dependence. 85% pumps run on diesel, basically 100% pump runs on diesel. 97% irrigators in, in the random sample survey report using diesel pump sets. More than 70% farmers here report buying at least some water. Uh, Diesel power prices quadrupled between 97 and 2006 and almost doubled again, yeah, or one and a half times. But the price of paddy and heat in this period? So this is a terms of trade now. Yeah? Liters of diesel that you can buy with one quintal of wheat and one quintal of paddy and farm rate prices in Bihar. Yeah? The stagnation map almost mimics this area. The area where this is falling. And then it's coming back, so it's almost mimics if you if you put the yield data to it, it will look like the trend would look very similar. I'm still not making a causal claim, but there is a strong evidence. And this price, you will say, okay, then why is it not having impact in Bihar, Eastern UP, Bangladesh, also diesel dependent areas and similar areas? I think when, so Bihar has lower yields to begin with. When your yield, when your output is low, then you are more vulnerable to input price increase. So you look at, this is the most, uh, 2009 was a drought in a lot of India. The number of states where drought was worse than in Bihar. But the decline in next zone area of Paris was maximum in Jharkhand and then in Bihar. This should not happen. Bihar is most water rich. We have a ton of water, a lot of water. It should have a minimum in Bihar, it was maximum. Why? Because Bihari farmers couldn't afford to irrigate. Their fields are low, so irrigating with diesel doesn't make sense. Other farmers had canals or uh, free electricity or cheap electricity. So in Bihar, it had the maximum effect when it should have had the minimum effect. So to sum up, agriculture growth in Bihar is very slow. Production is low and highly variable. There has not been much improvement. There is some talk uh, in the CJI surface that there has been improvement in the last seven years. I don't think so. 2007, we were back 30 years, 9 10 were drought years. In spite of private initiative and recent public investment, the government has built 50,000 kilometers of road. You can see, you can feel it. You still don't see agriculture budget has increased, but you don't see any, uh, not much action in the output except in livestock and some in uh, fish sector. So I think the reasons are expensive irrigation. No electricity and lack of assured prices for produce. That's a different matter. It's a big hurdle. So policy imperatives for this, this is my last slide. So Bihar has the highest rural poverty density in the world, more than Bangladesh. Now we are more densely populated than Bangladesh and our population is going faster than Bangladesh and dependence on agriculture is higher than our Bangladesh. So the highest rural population density in the world, 90% people live in village, 81% of them report working agriculture, and between during this glorious period of 13% per year growth, Poverty, a head down ratio didn't budge at all. And it doesn't matter where you draw your poverty line. I could do the estimates myself. You put it anywhere, it didn't budge. 13% growth for five years and no dent in poverty must be unique even in, in economic history, So I think that agriculture, so we all know that agriculture growth leads to fastest poverty reduction in India. It will be even more important in Bihar where most people are still in agriculture. Bihar, I don't make a strong statement. Bihar does not need expansion in irrigated area. Every inch of land that can be irrigated already has access to water. It needs intensification of irrigation. We don't need more diesel pump sets in that state. We need something that will make irrigation cheaper. So I think, I'm using rural electrification, solar, we talk about solar, anything that makes electricity cheaper. So the irrigation, variable cost of irrigation cheaper, will be the most effective stimulus for the highest agricultural economy and it will be the most effective Garibay Hatta poverty reduction scheme that you can dream of, more effective than Narega, more effective than anything that you can conjure up. That's my point and that's why I think this session and what all these companies and government are doing is very important. If you can found, find any way in short and medium term to make, reduce the cost of irrigation, variable cost of irrigation, it, will, it can do wonders like the chain we have and God knows we know we need these wonders in this poor state in the world. Thank, Thank you so much. Thanks.